Hello everyone, my name is Fast Cargo, and today I'm going to teach you how to craft a TARDIS for the Dalek Mod 1.16.5 update. Now, I've seen a lot of people struggle because they updated the crafting recipe from what the mod used to include. Now it seems much more complicated, and it includes fluid links while driving the TARDIS, which even I couldn't figure out how to get working. So first of all, one of the things that are different this year is that now you have the TARDIS coral plant. I already have one in my inventory, so I don't actually need this one. But basically, instead of just outright crafting a TARDIS that you place down and then you can just walk inside of, this time you have to plant down the TARDIS coral plant and wait around 30 minutes to an hour for the TARDIS to actually grow to its full size. So now, apart from the fact that you have the TARDIS coral plant to grow your own TARDIS, the crafting recipe has also changed quite a bit. So now, there is the TARDIS core, the TARDIS panels, and the TARDIS base, along with the flight lever and the fast return lever. In the other versions, you would actually craft different Doctor's TARDISes, which would then include the interior with them. But with this version of the mod, instead of doing that, you craft a basic TARDIS, which has a vanilla interior, and then you work towards either building one of the few preset interiors, or you can make your own interior. So it's really all up to you. So first, we will cover the TARDIS core, because that is indeed the hardest part of the TARDIS. Looking here, you can see that the crafting recipe requires four stone blocks, which you get from smelting cobblestone in a furnace, two iron bars, which you can craft using iron, the breath of the ender dragon, an artron cube, and a nether star. To get the dragon's breath, all you have to do is go to the end and wait for the dragon to shoot one of these purple fireballs. Once the purple fireball will land, it'll create a purple cloud of dust that if you walk into it, it will harm you. But you can actually take a bottle and bottle up the dragon's breath. You can then take that back to the overworld and use it to craft your TARDIS. Also, I'm not saying you have to craft it in the overworld, I'm just not sure why you would craft it in the end. The Nether Star, which is also very hard to get, requires you killing the Wither, which is another boss in Minecraft apart from the Ender Dragon. The Wither requires a T-shape of soul sand with three of these Wither skeleton heads on top. You get the Wither skeleton heads by, of course, killing Wither skeletons in a Nether Fortress. Do note that it is a small chance that they will actually drop their heads, so don't be discouraged, of course. Now, let's look at the Artron Cube. The Artron Cube is made up of bottles of Artron, as seen here, and you get these from collecting Artron energy from inside of these, which are called Artron Fuel Tanks. You can craft an Artron Fuel Tank as so, with three steel ingots, one bucket, two glass, and once you have one of those, all you have to do is wait. Once you wait long enough, you can get a glass bottle, take that over to your Artron fuel bank. Once it has enough fuel, you can put it inside and will actually collect the Artron energy. Once you get enough Artron energy, you can actually put it in a crafting table by filling every slot with an Artron fuel bottle. Because I don't have many of those, I'm just going to take a couple from the creative inventory. But as you can see, if I just put them here, you will get the Artron cube necessary for completing the crafting recipe for the TARDIS core. Now, on to the next crafting recipe, the TARDIS panels. Now, the TARDIS panels are, of course, a very meaningful component of the TARDIS, because without them, you can't actually go anywhere. It's just bigger on the inside. To craft the TARDIS panels, you need a glass rotor 
and several different panels, including the coordinates panel, the dimensional panel, the waypoints panel, and the chameleon panel. Each of these are pretty difficult to craft, but I'll, I'll just type them into JEI. Uh, As you can see, the coordinate panel is three stone blocks, one redstone torch, a redstone circuit, and an oak button. And then the dimensional selector panel is three glass, two buttons of any type, three stone, and of course a redstone circuit. Then the waypoint panel is an empty map, three stone, one birch button, or any button, of course, and a redstone circuit. And last but not least, because without this panel, you can actually make your TARDIS into a police box. The chameleon panel requires three glass, two redstone dust, one redstone circuit, and three stone. Once you've crafted all of those, including the glass rotor, which I'll get to, you place them into this crafting table grid, and you will get the TARDIS panel. Now, here's the problem. As you've probably noticed, there have been a lot of these redstone circuits. We did have these in the last Dalek mod update, but they changed the crafting recipe just a little bit. Now, this is the recipe for the redstone circuits. Two redstone like this, gold on the right side, iron on the left side, and in the middle, some silicon. Now, I'll get to the ores a bit later in the video, but silicon is pretty important since you will need a lot of these redstone circuits. Also, most people tend to ignore gold, but it is very important for crafting a TARDIS, sonic screwdrivers, or really any Dalek mod item, so be sure to stack up on as much gold. Also, just a little bit of a, you know, suggestion here. They might add, and I'm not saying they will, but it would be cool if they made it so that Cybermen were allergic to gold, and if you hit them with gold tools, that they took more damage or something. So maybe if they do add something like that in the future, you should probably start stacking up on gold. Also, it looks really cool, so just to do that anyway. Now we have the glass rotor. The glass rotor is, without a doubt, something that people actually struggle with quite a bit. Now, on DMU, I've seen a lot of people struggle with the getting the Dragon's Breath, or the Nether Star, the Nether Star in particular, since most people just buy Dragon's Breath, but a lot of people also struggle getting the Glass Rotor because it requires something that is a little bit difficult to get. Mm. Now, for the Glass Rotor, all you need is five glass, three stone, and a stainless steel ingot. Now remember, a steel ingot is just an iron ingot smelted in a furnace, but a stainless steel ingot? I'm sure you wanna know more. Basically, all you need is a honeycomb and a steel ingot to create the stainless steel ingot. But in case you didn't know, Mojang added bees to Minecraft in 1.14. And because of this, you can now get honeycombs. Now over here I found a wild bee nest, if I could just locate it, it should be about here. And there are actually bees somewhere around here that live in this nest. But if you wait long enough, the bees will go to flowers, get pollen, come back, and make honey. Now, the way to get a honeycomb is... You just need to craft yourself some shears, and once these two little holes on the beehive are golden with honey, you just want to right-click it with your shears. But that will make the bees angry, and they will sting you. Once the bees sting you, they actually die, so that means you don't have bees anymore. And bees are pretty important if you do want to craft more glass rotors in the future. So, to avoid them stinging you, place a campfire below the beehive before shearing it to get the honeycomb. This, for some reason, makes them not attack you, probably because it's like one of those smokers that they use on bees. And it is a pretty important part, because bees actually are quite cool. I like them a lot myself. Now, the next thing on the agenda is actually the TARDIS base. The TARDIS base is the last huge component that requires a lot of things. And by a lot of things, I mean three pretty 
annoying to craft items. So to the craft the TARDIS base, you need the architectural reconfiguration system, the scanner, and the fault locator. The architectural reconfiguration system, well, that's a long thing to say, requires three glass, two stone, one diamond, and three of those redstone circuits. Then the next thing is the scanner. This one's pretty easy. It requires three redstone circuits, five stone, one glass, and then you'll have it. The last thing is the fault locator, five stone, two redstone circuits, one of those Archeron fuel banks in the crafting recipe, and a chest. Once you have all of those, oh come on! Now, once you have all of those, you want to put them in a crafting table like this, with the fault locator on the left, the scanner in the middle, and the fault locator. Is this? Wait. Okay. So you want the architectural reconfiguration system on the left, the scanner in the middle, and the fault locator on the right. Now, once you've crafted your TARDIS's base, now you need the flight lever and the fast return switch, which I have over here. Pretty simple standard recipes, three cobblestone on the top, two on the bottom with a redstone circuit in between, two sticks connecting those two, and then the flight lever is pretty simple as well. A stick connected to a redstone circuit with two cobblestone on either side. Now, once you have all of that, including the TARDIS core, the TARDIS panels, and the TARDIS base, along with the flight lever and the fast return switch, you'll put them in a crafting table just like this, and you will indeed craft the TARDIS core plant. Now, as I said, this can take around 30 to 60 minutes to craft, so it does take quite a while, but once you do, you will get your own TARDIS. Now, once you grow the TARDIS capsule, you can click on it like this and choose either the TARDIS capsule and the console room being the TARDIS default or the SIDRAT capsule and the SIDRAT default. The SIDRAT is just TARDIS backwards, but it's not actually a backwards control room. It actually looks more along the lines of maybe a cross between the fifth and fourth Doctor's TARDIS, while the TARDIS default looks more like the first Doctor's TARDIS. So, I'm just going to go with the TARDIS default, and once I do that, it will give me a TARDIS key for my TARDIS. It will say it's growing, and then you can open the doors by right-clicking them. Do note, if you just right-click it, it will only open this door, but if you right-click it and then shift right-click, you can open both doors. Now, once you walk inside, it will give you several different uh, things about a manual on how to fly your TARDIS, but once you do that, you will have a very beautiful TARDIS. This is the one that I normally like to use because it's just simple and basic. Now, a short guide on how to fly your TARDIS, basically all you need to do is choose the coordinates you want to go to on this here panel by either subtracting coordinates or adding them. And you can also change the rotation of your TARDIS. Um, this, I think, just makes it so that you don't land inside of a block. This changes the increment of how many coordinates you want to change. So if I want to change this to 154 to 1154, now it will go up to there. And if I just change that so that goes back to 1, instead of going to 1,154, it'll go to 1,155. Makes sense? Very good. Okay, so basically, once you have the coordinates that you want, you can use the flight lever right here to take off. Please note, your TARDIS will take a bit of time before you can land, especially if it's a longer location. But once you've arrived there, you can rematerialize and walk right outside of your TARDIS. So, it is pretty cool. Alright, so, thank you for watching. In the next video, I'll be going over the ores, as I said earlier, and I'll also be covering the amazing fluid links, which are definitely a necessity to run your TARDIS. So I hope you enjoyed, and so far, your TARDIS crafting journey should be successful.